Hey, good morning, Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today, let's talk about encapsulation, crawl space encapsulation. When should you do it? Why should you do it? And how you do it? I'm gonna let Ed up in Raleigh, North Carolina, take you through the process. Hey, welcome back, Dr. Drains with Apple Drains of North by God, Carolina. Today, I want you to, I want my uh, Sarah, if you would, check out my sweet slides. All right, so Dr. Drains, do you show up to work in slides all the time? No, I do not. But in a minute, you're gonna find out why I've got my slides on. So what I wanna do, I wanna talk about is, when do you want a French drain? When do you want to encapsulate your crawl space? Oh, Dr. Drains, why are you gonna encapsulate the crawl space? Who does that? We do that when we need to, uh, and I'll explain through this video when you need to consider encapsulating, when you need to take care of the outside water. So, and we're also going to talk about the downspout drains. When do we want to just grab the outside water that's been raining, top of the ground, roof roof water coming off, take that away, and after we do that, do we really need to encapsulate? Maybe, maybe. So, what I want to show you is this customer right here uh, has got downspouts. I will say that this customer decided to encapsulate first. Not the right call here. <laughs> uh, encapsulation is real encapsulation. We'll talk about that. It's really expensive. It's time consuming. There's a lot of equipment. There's labor. There's all sorts of things that go into it. So you want to take your best choice first. If you're a DIY and you want to do that, an encapsulation crawl space could take you a month. If you're doing it on Saturdays, it'll take you six months. It's just a lot to do when you truly encapsulate. I'm not talking about Bubba and Cletus showing up in a truck with some plastic from Home Depot laying on the ground. That's not encapsulation. I'm talking about completely sealing, insulating, taking the insulation on the floor, filling the holes in, putting the insulation on the walls, uh, putting a dehumidifier in. We'll go through all the steps. It's a lot of steps. But this customer did the encapsulation first. Uh, it was the wrong choice for them. So what we're going to do now is they have downspouts. So what's happening is the water is coming in and the water is hitting the ground and all it's doing is getting back underneath the crawl space. Now it's encapsulated so the water is coming back in the crawl space and it's not a big deal. Uh, they just noticed that was back in there. So what we're going to do and what they should have done from the beginning is take the water from the roof take the water from the ground, take it out. Uh, this, this customer's got some great woods behind him, which is awesome. Do that first. Now, do you have to encapsulate the crawl space? Um, usually not. Does it help to encapsulate the crawl space? Absolutely it helps, because what it does is you, underneath your house, you create a conditioned environment, so there's no mold, there's no mildew, the humidity's low. We set our dehumidifiers at 48% for a particular reason. There's a lot of things you can do before you spend all the money to encapsulate a crawl space. Uh, I, I, I like encapsulation a crawl space because you create that level of insulation underneath the house. It's controlled. Uh, you don't have the dirty, musty, nasty, stinky. Uh, you don't have all of that. And you also get rid of, well, I don't want to give it away. It's a secret. It's a secret. Shh. It's coming up. All right. So what I'm gonna do is show you here, we're gonna grab the downspouts for this customer. Uh, if we walk around, I'm gonna slide in front of you. We also have the air conditioning line, and we also have the dehumidifier line. If you look down here, Miss Sarah, and these haven't been in there that long, you'll notice that it's already pooling. Now the water here is just going underneath the house. You see, oh, hey, Mr. Slug. Mr. Slug's not gonna like us. Hello. I'm a slug. I like I like mildew and mold and really wet places. And because you didn't do it right and get all this water, I'm living in your house now. Okay. So I didn't even know that was there. That's awesome. So the water hits here and it goes right back under the house, gets underneath and comes back in. Now, if we can take care of this water before it does that, then we don't need to encapsulate the crawl space. Now, after we take care of this water and we get all the water away from the house, if you've got a natural spring, uh, if you've got water naturally, naturally coming up around your foundation, definitely we're going to need a French drain underneath the house 
at least. And then I also always recommend encapsulation. We're already under there. Let's go ahead and do it, do it right. All right, thank you. All right, welcome back. Here are my slides. All right, I uh, took them off for a reason. We do crawl space encapsulations when needed. Absolutely, 100%. We'll do a French drain in the crawl space, foot or tile, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'll put a sump pump in a crawl space. We'll insulate it and on and on and on. So we're getting ready to go over one of our jobs. We have several jobs out there, but we haven't got back to. We actually built this door. A customer had one of the old junky, leaky metal ones. So we came in, we did some pressure treated wood. We sealed everything up real nice. We insulated with some foam board. You can buy this at Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, you can use wood or PVC on the doors. We usually use wood, but we had some PVC. And also, a serial will come around. You'll notice we got a double locking system on there. So I'll show you the locks. Uh, there's a reason for that. If you can see, one of them's a hasp and one of them is a bolt. The hasp is so you can put a lock on there if you want to keep the kids out. Um, you know, the neighborhood ruffians who like to homeless people. So, and you also have the bolt lock, which the bolt lock actually seals it tight. We put weather stripping on, and that way when we shut the door, it's sealed tight. And we'll go over what we do to control the inside of the crawl space in just a minute. But I want you to see, now Sarah's gonna come in. She's gonna come into the darkness. She's gonna poke it in here. Now remember, this crawl space was a dirty, nasty, filthy mess. Ready? Okay. Here comes the money shot again. Bam! Yay! So the first thing that happens is I go in the crawl space, and I've been in tens of thousands of crawl spaces, literally, not figuratively, but tens and thousands of crawl spaces I've been in. So I know a nasty one when I see it. I am certified for mold remediation, I've got all three licenses for HVAC, been doing it for 36 years. I'm, I'm one of those guys that actually knows what I'm doing and what I'm talking about. I'm not the best, but I'm, I'm pretty darn good. So what we do is we evaluate what, what they need, we give recommendations, and the customer spends the money how they want to. If they wanted us to paint the floor joist in gold, uh, first off I take one heck of a deposit, and then I paint them in gold. Um, whatever they want, I'll, I, I just recommend, it's their money, it's their home, I'll do it you want to do as a DIY. But again, um, as a DIY, when you come in a situation like this, this is some pretty heavy lifting work. Not super technical, you just have to have a lot of specialty tools. Um, so we came in the crawl door. We always seal around the crawl door. Uh, if you notice, the mat, um, there's no real mill, mill rating on this mat. If I had to guess, it'd be like a 50 or a 75 or something. Super thick rubber mat, you buy it in a roll. And what we do, Anywhere where you're going to come into the crawl space or the service guy is, the main landing platform, we've got our uh, 12 mil plastic. Then we put a, another, I think this is like a 15 mil black. It's real thick stuff. And then on top of that, we put a landing pad because the places that are going to wear out are not going to be in the corners. It's going to be where guys are crawling, where they usually go. So we'll put it around air conditioning equipment, the plumbing, uh, this particular one here. Uh, this is your expansion tank for the plumbing. Um, so the guys are going to be here. And if you notice, they actually have two doors. And in the middle, we have our dehumidifier. And what we're going to do is we'll talk about that a little bit as well. But I want to show you DIY. To protect your investment, really put down something heavy. If you want to go get a four or five welcome mats at the Dollar Tree, that, that's absolutely fine. Whatever will protect your plastic. Now, what happens if they caught the plastic? It's okay. You can buy this stuff online. This is vinyl, just regular vinyl plastic tape, and it's made for crawl space encapsulation. Just Google it, you'll find it on there. How wide do you want it? Your preference, two, three inches is usually fine. I think this is a four inch roll. We like the wider stuff. Um, so if you get a guy that comes in here and tears something up, all they have to do, and we leave a partial roll of this with every customer, and we leave it close to the door, hanging up or wherever. This one's on the tank. Um, you just take a piece out and you tape it up. It's like brand new. It's no big deal. The plastic is going to get cut. Stuff's going to happen. Tell your service people, hey, take your shoes off when you come in. Now, this customer is going to be mad. Let me tell you why. Because this customer had solar work done. 
uh, this has been a few months since we did this. This was done last year. Um, he's had some solar work done. When I got here, the light was on and the door was cracked. They didn't put the bolt on. So what's happened is, Sarah can check out all these moths. There they are. Yep. This crawl space now has moths. Not a big deal, but it's, it was very pretty. Now it's speckled with moths. So if you see that, that's not us. I'll let the customer know. He'll get it cleaned up. No big deal. All right. This is the landing area. And we're going to move over to another. Oh, by the way, this tank was one of the leaks on this system. It was leaking here. The customer would have never known it unless we were in the crawl space. Uh, it was leaking water hitting here. There was another leak or two in the back. Um, so when we do this, we're going to find all of your plumbing leaks. All of them. And we're going to tell you about them. We're not plumbers, but we're going to tell you about them. Get your plumber here, get it fixed, uh, and then we can continue with the work. All right, thank you. All right, so you want to encapsulate your crawl space, but your bug person said, Oh, you can't do that because you're creating a bowl. Where's the water going to go if you get a leak? Your air conditioner leaks, your plumbing leaks. Well, I can answer that, little Jimmy. It's going to go to the lowest point in the crawl space. And let's just say, for instance, that's this corner. So we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you what we put in here. I moved it out for a reason. So all the water will sit in this corner. Let's say you're on vacation, and you come back, and you hear... You didn't hear anything, and you look underneath your crawl space, and it's a big bowl. There's just tons of water in here. It's okay. Don't freak out. First off, you know there's a leak, which is important. You get it fixed. Second off, you just vacuum it out. It's no big deal. You get a shot back, a little sump pump, vacuum it out. Most importantly, you know there's a leak. Now, what do we do to let you know? Inside all of our crawl spaces will be a sensor. And we're going to have a real quick video a little bit later. I'm going to show you what it sounds like. It's just so you can buy it online. I'm going to show you what it is. You're going to put it in the corner right here. And when the water hits it, it's just a freaky alarm. And we let customers know it's down there just so they know. And the alarm's going to go off. And it's going to let you know there's water in the crawl space. Well, I don't want water in there. Well, you're going to have it. If you get a plumbing leak, it's going to drop underneath your house. It's going to fill with, if not water, it's going to be high humidity. You're going to get mold. You're going to start rotting your joists. And you're not going to know about it. We've got a job coming up I'm going to show you. This customer had a leak under his house for years, spraying under his house for years. It completely washed it away. The only reason we found it is in the back corner of the house, no one ever goes there, is a nasty crawl space is full of, just full of nasty, it was gross. So we cleaned it all out, we found the leak, he got a plumber in, and his humidity now is down to 48% where we want it. So we want to make sure that our crawl spaces are completely sealed. What you've got here, we'll have details going down the road, but you got a block wall here. What we do is we put up two inch foam board right here from Lowe's. It doesn't block the water, but it helps with the air and it's insulator. We put the foam board, we shoot nails in it. We'll have videos on that. We come back over, we put butyl tape on the top to hold it. We don't stop there. We go one step further and then we shoot these nails with this uh, sweet little Hilti gun. It looks like a Star Wars gun. Yes. Uh, right here and that holds it up forever. And then we seal all the joints. Now these cavities here, you can see that we've cut the two inch foam board and we insulate it and then we foam around it. Now moisture can come through here so it's not blocking it so you're not rotting out your joists. This is not it's solid, but it lets moisture through. You don't want to, if you spray that closed cell foam, that spray foam, there's two different types, open and closed cell. If you use a closed cell, nothing goes through, no air, no moisture. Sometimes we'll come in, we'll see it in the floor, they'll spray the floor, and it's horrible. It holds everything up, so if the water was to leak on your subfloor, it's going to stay there and rock the wood. You may never know what happened until the floor falls out. So we don't want that to happen. If Sarah can pan up, we go through and we left a little bit here. I want you to see, uh, we take all the insulation out of the floor, every bit of it, and we seal the holes, which we're going to find. Now, let me tell you something. Well, should I take my insulation out or should I insulate the walls? In North Carolina, it's a super easy choice. Insulate the walls. Advanced Energy did a, a survey uh, they spent like three or five years in North Carolina on a couple of streets uh, measuring is it better to insulate the walls or insulate the floor. 
Uh, long story short, insulate the walls. Uh, if you want all the specs on that, just at, at Google Advanced Energy North Carolina and flip to the back pages because it's like 40 some pages. I've read it all several times. Um, but you definitely insulate the walls. That is where the best place is. Now, this house is about, I think it's about 13 years old. We pulled out 23 dead mice in a 13 year old house. And this person here kept the house immaculate. This is not a nasty house. What they do is the insulation in the floor, you'll have mice, snakes, rats, whatever, you know, little lighter creatures. They'll live in between the floor and the insulation because they'll make a nest there. And what they do is they, you know, mice multiply, snakes come in, and they make a nest. And over time, you got feces and dead mice, and they die. You know, you get pest control companies come in. So we put out 23. It was absolutely disgusting. Um, and you can see there's nothing wrong with this wood. So they live up there, and they have a little rodent super highway. It's gross. But they don't have rust stops. So they pee and poo all along for years. This has happened. We pulled it out. It was gross. We had to put our respirators on and gloves, and it was just nasty. So we insulated the walls and sealed it up. Customer's happy. All right. So which dehumidifier do we recommend? There, there's a lot of brands on the market, a lot of really good brands on the market. Being that I've got 35 plus years in HVAC, I can make a true recommendation. Uh, April Air, by far the best dehumidifier. Does Santa Fe work? Absolutely, no, no doubt. It, it's a really, really good one. But for HVAC folks for the last several decades, we've used April Air pretty much exclusively. Now, not necessarily in crawl spaces, we actually attach these to the ductwork and it'll run independently and reduce the humidity in the house. For example, in your home, it's springtime and it's maybe 75 degrees outside and it rains. Your house doesn't warm up, but the moisture gets in your house and it gets really humid. You can really feel it. It's like, uh, it's not hot enough for the AC to turn on, but the humidity is creeping up. That's what these are for. You can actually connect these into your ductwork and reduce the humidity level in the house. They're, they're wonderful and they act independently. They work independently of your AC system and they're easy to hook up. But for this situation, uh, this is the April Air. And if you notice up here on the tab, 48%. Now, I will let you know, when we came into this job, uh, that was in the 80s. 80% new home, 80% humidity in the crawl space. Ridiculous. No reason for it. So we install this. Now, we do a, a specific rack from April Air. If you notice, it'll kind of move a little bit. We have it hung from the rafters. It's set on foam, so you don't have the noise vibration, the harmonics, what they call it, transferring to the metal, to the chain, into the floor. You don't even hear this thing run at all. Uh, so it'll run, the air comes in here, it's got, a, it's got a, a pad, and you literally, that one's a little dirty, so we're probably, probably time for some maintenance on this. You come over here, if Sarah will come around, you take this screw out, you take it out, you clean it, you put it back in, or you replace it, completely up to you. Now, what model is this? Excellent question. April Air has several models. This one's in the middle. 1830. 70 pints a day. Now, why do we use this one? Uh, April Air's got a much larger one. It's a lot noisier, though. Uh, a lot of complaints when they first came out. I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. A lot of complaints about in the crawl space. I could hear it come on, hear it come off. Uh, this one's super quiet. Now, they have a smaller one as well. We rarely use that one. I don't think I've ever had to use it yet. But what it is, it's really small for the really small crawl spaces because you've got to manage your water coming off of this. This right here is your drain line, like your AC. You can see it's been insulated. You tap in and run the AC out. This creates a lot of water. So you want to make sure that you, if you don't insulate this line, uh, you're going to get little droplets and it's going to fall on the ground. And it's going to be ugly and just, just insulate it. It's no big deal. So this is the unit that we use. It plugs into a traditional outlet. Um, it's got a pretty super long cord on there. It's like, like a six or eight feet. And it's quiet and it works. And it's large enough to handle any crawl spaces we've ever been in. Now, if we get a super large crawl space, uh, instead of putting the large dehumidifier in, I'll actually put two of these, one on each side. So it's handling two areas. Now, we get a lot of questions. Well, if you put it down here in this end of the house, 
What about the crawl? Is it going to handle it over there? Absolutely. The wet air chases the dry air. That's you know super scientific, I'm sure. But if it's really dry over here, that wet air is going to migrate over here. It's just basic physics. It's going to work, it's naturally going to work its way. There's a fan on here that blows, so it pressurizes. So it's going to work that air around in the crawl space. It's going to get back here. If you want more details on that, Google you know April air or uh, humidity and dehumidifiers. How does it work? A lot of folks will come on here and, they, and it comes with a fitting to where they want to pipe it to the other end of the crawl space and make it push over here. You know, pushes out this end and comes in this end. Really bad idea because every time you add fittings on here from a almost 40 year HVAC vet, you add fittings on here, it actually reduces your airflow, your pressure. By the time you get to the other end down there, it's almost no pressure. You're not building it. You've really made it a lot worse. So you definitely want to just let it blow. Put it somewhere in the biggest spot um, and just let it do its thing. And the reason I know it works is that we have something called a psychrometer. It's a little handheld thing that all HVAC, good HVAC guys have. When we go through in the summertime and we test humidity levels at different parts of a crawl space, like this is a 2,000 square foot crawl space. So we'll test the humidity level here. We'll test it all the way in the corner and they're always within one or two percent, always. And a sealed crawl space, seal, a truly sealed crawl space. If you're not gonna seal your crawl space, don't waste your money, don't waste your time, don't put a dehumidifier in. If you're not gonna seal it, and we'll get into that later on, DIY people, if your guy comes and says, hey, I'm gonna throw some plastic on the ground and put a dehumidifier in, but he doesn't seal up the holes in the wall that's letting all this humidity in, first off, kick Bubba and Cletus off the job. Get some more estimates, get some more input, do some of your own research. If you don't seal it up, let me give an example. That is like buying a $10,000 air conditioner. It's 100 degrees outside, and you decide to open up every single window in your house, and you expect that air conditioner to first to cool the house, which you won't, but more importantly, expect it to dehumidify to bring that humidity down so you feel comfortable like you're not living in a a desert or a, sorry a, a rainforest it's the same thing with this if you got vents open all in your crawl space you got a hundred degree 95 degree air at 60 70 percent humidity naturally going through the crawl space absorbing it into your wood ruining your wood why would you do that you seal it all up and then you turn the dehumidifier on well what if i don't have that kind of cash no problem this is where bubba and cletus come in um, give them a hundred bucks so they can go buy some beer for the weekend and you go buy the plastic from Lowe's and Home Depot. You give them a hundred bucks and you have them lay it down on your, on your ground. Overlap it by about a foot. Um, if you give them 120 bucks, they'll put some tape down for you. At least overlap it. Don't buy those steaks and jam them in there. That's just silly. It makes no sense. Um, but you can at least overlay it. And if no one comes in and no one disturbs it, it's fine. Uh, but that's what Bubba and Cletus are for. Those guys are good for that. Or DIY. Do it yourself. Go buy it and just lay it out. That's a great first step. It's perfect. But please, whatever you do, don't put a dehumidifier in unless you fully encapsulate the crawl space. You're wasting your money, and you're going to just make it worse. Thank you. All right, welcome back. Dr. Drains, Apple, by God, North Carolina. We are in a beautiful crawl space. This is great. It's not hot in here. Matter of fact, it's 48% humidity, and it's super comfortable. I, I might take a nap. Sarah, you mind if I take a nap? No. She said no. Shake the camera. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do is I want to go over for the DIY what we do and what you can easily do. So what do you do with pipes? What most people will do with pipes is they leave them hanging. They're all droopy. And if you're going to go in the crawl space, if you're going to take some time to dehumidify, this is what we do. Now, we use a specific webbing. Guys, this is just lawn chair webbing. There's no voodoo magic with this. You go online, you Google it, and there's a hundred different colors. Now, we use red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. So, Sarah's going to come back to me. Why do we use red, white, and blue? Well, first off, um, we know where we've been. So, anywhere you see red, white, and blue, and you can buy this online, Google it. They're not always in stock, but it's there. Anywhere you see red, white, and blue, we've been there. Uh, we put these straps up. Uh, we want you to know that we care about your home. Uh, and for the second most important reason, America. Of course, red, white, and blue. What other color would I use? So, Sarah's back on this. Now, what we do 
is we go every other joist at least. If you notice this line here, there, there. And for the DIY, all you do is you take your roll of webbing. What size do you use? I think that's a three inch. Two inch would be fine. You know, the heavier the pipe, uh, you know, the heavier, but the two inch would be fine. You cut it in little strips and you take a little, Sarah can zoom in somehow here. These are five sixteenths screws. Uh, you can use quarter inch, whatever. And there's just little tiny screws and you take it and, uh, and you put your thing out, you fold it over and you drill it up through. We'll have a video to show you how to do it, but it's really simple. Now, how tight do you want it? Just support the pipe. See, it's in there, it's not super tight, it's not jammed up to the top. So if someone hits it, it's a little bit of play, no big deal. But we go every other joist. Now, I want Sarah to scan over to the wall and she's gonna show you what we do with the wires. Guys, this takes time. Bubba and Cletus are not gonna do this. If you're a DIY, take the time to get these wires the heck out of the way. It's really simple, it's easy to do. It just takes a little extra time. If you're gonna go to the effort to do a good job in your crawl space as a DIY, or if you're a contractor and you're not doing this, shame on you, shame on you. It takes a little time, that's all. Uh, you want it to look good, but functionality gets the wires up out of the way, so you're not pulling on stuff. Uh, people are hammering, and you know, it's, it's all the wires are right there. So if Sarah would just, where she's at, just kind of look down in this crawl space, and you'll see, yes, we hang HVAC lines. We support them with these. It's plenty heavy enough. Those lines there, any, anywhere that we think needs a little bit of support, but definitely every other joist. I could go through this entire crawl space, and you can see America everywhere because we want to do the work right. Now, Bubba and Cletus, forget it. They're going to break more lines than they hang. It's just how it is with cheap contractors. All right, that's my tirade about looking neat and doing a great job. But DIYers, definitely do it. Support your pipe, grab the other joist, every four foot or so. Um, keep that pipe supported so it doesn't bow and break. And it puts stress on the fittings, on the plumbing fittings especially. You know, it puts stress on them and they'll crack. And, and then you're calling us out to clean up your crawl space again. All right, thank you. All right, welcome back. So what do you do in your crawl space? If your guy says, oh, you can't seal your crawl space, you're gonna have radon, you're gonna have smell, it's gonna smell like a skunk. Um, well, there's a, that's a lot to unwrap. Let's make it really simple. The EPA says you put in one of these. It's real simple. The new codes in some of these houses, when you seal a crawl space, you gotta have one of these. What does this do? This takes the air from in the crawl space and blows it out. It's really simple. So. If you got a seal crawl space, and you get a, if you get a, like a skunky or a, a cat urine smell, that's because your contractor used this ridiculous layered plastic material, and it's just a bunch of nonsense. Out, oh, when it gets wet, it actually peels apart. Just Google cat urine and crawl space encapsulation. There's a ton of it. It really stinks. Uh, we don't do use the multi-layer reinforced. We reinforce what we need to. We put the, the mats down. We use good quality plastic, not from Lowe's. There's nothing wrong with the Lowe's plastic. You just can't buy the thickness that we get. You can buy it online anywhere. And then on top of that, we put our black thick plastic. And then where the guys are working, we put another pad on top of that. So, and then we leave the customer with a roll of the, the white tape that will, you know, if they nick it or drop a tool, you just put the tape on. It's like brand new, no big deal. So what this does, and you set it. Now there's a little debate on where you set it at. We put ours around 40. And it's actually running now. And it's running because we've got the door open and a little bit of humidity is coming in, so it's sensing it. So what this is going to do is it's going to come on and it's going to move it out. Now a lot of guys will turn this down to on all the time. So it's continually running, continually moving air. If you do have a smell, which you shouldn't ever with a, with a crawl space, you can do that. But we found when it's right here, it's perfectly fine. We've never had one customer call back say, so I gotta smell um, anything like that. Now you can't smell or see radon, you have to test for it, and it's super rare in North Carolina. It's out there, so if you're worried about it, go to Lowe's and Home Depot, get a radon test kit, and if it does come up positive, then just turn it to on, no big deal. So what this does, it pulls the air out, it shoots it outside, it's sealed. Uh, we use Lamanco, there's a lot of brands out there, you can buy these on the internet. Uh, and the model number for you DIYers is, what is this model number? Sarah? 
Um, PVC one power crawl space vent, foundation vent from Lomenko. Now, what do you do? Well, you take one of your holes or your foundation vent, and you knock it out, you put this bad boy in, you screw it in with some anchor bolts, and you plug it in. Uh, if you're a DIYer, uh, run the extension cord somewhere. This thing pulls 0.2 amps. It's almost nothing. So just get you a light duty extension cord, run it over to a plug, and plug it in. It actually handles itself. That's it. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And also, it'll keep the air moving in the crawl space. So like I said, uh, if you have any buildup of anything, gases, smells, or anything, it keeps it sealed. Uh, it keeps, keeps it moving, keeps the air moving in the crawl space for a sealed crawl space. So definitely, we put these in on every single job. Um, how many of those do you need? Well, at, uh, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja, does a great video on that, explaining that. Uh, I'm going to recommend you go Google Crawl Space Ninja, and he goes over the math on it. Pretty much, you just need one. They do like so many, it's not about the cubic area, like length times width times height, it's just flat square foot. So you can have a one foot tall crawl space or a hundred foot tall crawl space and the EPA doesn't say you have to have a larger one, they just go by square footage. So it's kind of ridiculous. If you got 2,000 square feet and it's not closed off, just put one of those in, it's fine, absolutely. 3,000, one's fine. Um, they're like a hundred bucks. And if you're like, I don't know if I got enough, I'll add another one, it's no big deal. So. I just wanted you to know that we put these in all of our jobs. They're really important. You can hear the super. This thing's been running the whole time. It's super quiet. You can't hear it. Um, and again, the door is open, so we're pulling humidity in, and our dehumidifier will turn on here soon. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. All right, welcome back. So, what we like to do here at Apple Drains in North Carolina, when we do a full encapsulation, we definitely take our time. Most importantly, when we're done, we want the customer to be able to poke their head in the crawl space, flip a light switch, and look at every single corner. Now, that is about 70 feet down there to that corner, and Sarah's not gonna zoom in because she doesn't have to. You can look down there and, and see if you got a critter, or you can see if you got a water leak because it's gonna come on down to the lowest spot. We talked about that. We use LED lights. It's about 200 feet of LED lights. Uh, for the DIYer, these lights go to uh, and we buy ours off Amazon, it's no secret. I got nothing to sell you here except my services. I got free advice for you, we got DIY stuff. Go to Amazon. Um, they're LED, they cost hardly anything to run. If you forget to turn them off, don't worry about it. You won't even notice on your electric bill, but definitely turn them off if you can. Let me make a suggestion though. Sarah's gonna come in and zoom here. Uh, we found with both brands we use, um, we put a little piece of duct tape right there. Because what we found over time, these separate a little bit, and like the top will fall off, and no big deal, it's a cosmetic thing, but hey, DIY, put a little piece of duct tape on there. Oh my gosh, you're having to duct tape your stuff already? I don't want this to be a problem for the customer. I don't want in 10 years them to open the door and one of my lights are laying on the floor. It's just, it's not even hot, it's the LED. You don't even feel it. So it's a cosmetic thing. Go ahead and put a, put a little piece of duct tape on. You never have to mess with it again. It's absolutely fine. Well, you can notice, Sarah's gonna look back there again. You see America everywhere, America! lights you can see every single corner and this was a dingy dark crawl space you came in and there was like a little light here uh, even a hundred watt bulb you couldn't see anything back there it was gross now you can see it's like hospital clean uh, this customer like I said is gonna have to they had a solar company come in and they left it cracked so some bugs came in because they like the lights they're gonna have to vacuum it all up but also here's our landing pad so, here's the other door. When the guys come in, the first thing they hit is this landing pad. So this is super thick rubber on top of black, on top of white. So you got a super thick level. So you're not gonna break that. And it goes all the way down to the dehumidifier. We got another one behind Sarah. It goes to the expansion tank. Uh, so you wanna make sure you lay a heavy traffic area and just take the time. It costs a few dollars to put this in. So DIY, definitely put this in. Now, it, it, DIY, if you, if you buy a roll of it, I'll just go ahead and roll it out. You know, we, we do these for the landing areas, but if you want to use that, just roll it out to wherever you want, and that's absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. You'll never puncture that. But I want to show you what it looks like after. Like, oh, you're going to make my house look like that? My house is gross. we got a house coming up that I took some, some before pictures on, and you open the door, and it's this tall, 
and it was full of snake skins, carcasses, there was mold everywhere. We had to, yes, we are certified for mold remediation. I am a certified mold inspector. Yes, we can do all that. Um, in North Carolina, yes, we can. Um, illegally, yes, legally. If you have asbestos, don't call me. That's a specialty license, and I'm not going to deal with that. But here in North Carolina, we want to make sure we get all the junk out of here, the trashy crawl spaces, and back to the original statement. Is my crawl space going to look like this? Yes, it will. It will be white. It will have LED lights to the entire thing. Uh, it's going to be dehumidified. It will drop down to the humidity level. It's going to look gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Wow. Showcase work. Ed there in Raleigh area. Kevin in Charlotte. Ed down in Miami. Myself here in Orlando. We do outstanding work. You know, at the end of this video where they we do the suggested videos, I will post a playlist uh, of how to waterproof that crawl space yourself. So take a look if you're interested in doing this yourself. It's a great way to learn. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.